we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. If we can find out together what insecurity is and why we are insecure, then in the unfolding of it, in the causation of it, security naturally comes about. Hello and welcome to episode 169 of Urgency of Change. Each episode of the Krishnamurti podcast is compiled from carefully chosen extracts from our archives, representing different approaches to many of the fundamental issues and questions we all face in our lives. This week's theme is insecurity. Upcoming themes are selfishness, the brain and insight. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Please visit our updated website at kfoundation.org where you can find a new introduction to Krishnamurti, a growing collection of articles, a wide selection of quotes and a new index of topics for easy access to carefully selected texts and recordings. Our online store stocks all available Krishnamurti books and ships worldwide. You can also find our regular quotes and videos on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave a review or rating on Apple Podcasts, which helps our visibility. This week's episode on insecurity has four sections. This first extract is from the second question and answer meeting at Brockwood Park in 1982, titled The Nature of Insecurity. We are insecure. I am seeking security. But the actual fact is I am insecure, uncertain, confused, waffling about. Moving from one thing to another, one family to another, one woman to another, one man to another, one guru to another. You follow? I'm seeking security. And I think there is security in nation, in a community, in a family. Or, if I'm fairly intelligent, I said, no, there is no security, but there is security in God, in obeying, in following, in accepting. But the fact remains all the time that there is this feeling of deep insecurity. So can we Put away the search for security, psychologically, and inquire into what is insecurity. Then I, I can deal with it. But if I'm all the time seeking security, and, and I see very well I can't find it in churches, in priests, in books, in people, in gurus, in ideas, there is none of it. I see that. So I come back and say, now, I'm insecure. Why? What is insecurity? I'm talking, first of all, psychologically. Not the first secure outwardly, then secure inwardly, but first, psychologically, I'm inquiring into insecurity. Please see the importance of this. 
the communists, socialists, and various other groups have tried to find, bring about security for man outwardly. And they all failed. The communists started out, you know what, I won't go into all that. All kinds of propositions, ideals, and then ended up in totalitarianism. So unless we tackle, grasp the inward structure of human behaviour, human mind, psychologically, merely the outward coating will have no effect. One doesn't realise this. So first we are seeking together, try to find out what is it? Why we live in psychologically in, in insecure? Why we feel insecure, right? Not the other. Why? Now, when I am insecure, and I know I am insecure, is there subtle? a subtle intuition that there is security. You understand? I'm insecure. I'm married, I'm all the rest of it, but I feel insecure. But there may be also deep down in me the feeling that there is some way of security. And I'm pursuing that unconsciously, though I'm trying to investigate insecurity. You fall? I wonder if you see this. I must be I must be very clear that I am not surreptitiously on the table seeking security, though I profess I'm in secret. So we must be clear right through our being that there is that one lives in insecurity. Why? Then we can ask the real question. But if you are half and half, you know, half and half of anything, you become mediocre. That's a good subject, mediocrity, but we won't go into that. The word mediocrity means going up the mountain halfway. A person who goes halfway is mediocre, who doesn't go right to the top of it. Not in profession, not in some particular subject, but psychologically it doesn't go right to the top of it. Such a person is mediocre. I'm not saying you are. <laughs> so what is insecurity? Can there be security at all? Don't be depressed, don't feel anxious. And we are investigating. Can there be? Though I am seeking, wanting, searching, longing for security, realising I am insecure, I am also asking, is there really security at all? My search for security may be wrong. What I am seeking is not security, but a quality of mind, brain, that will meet everything rightly. Right? I wonder if you understand this. I feel insecure, 
And I see life is insecure. There is death always. There is always an accident. There is always something happening. Shaking my foundations. I realise that and I, and I say to myself, is there security at all? If we don't deny it, I'm questioning it, going into it. Because security is necessary. The brain can only function effectively, vitally, fully, with all its extraordinary capacity, when it is secure. Like a child, baby must be secure. So the brain must feel that it is completely secure. Not be shaken, not be... It must be immovable in its security. Then the brain is flowering. You understand? Are we following each other? So, let's find out If, the, if there is security at all, and if there is no security, the brain cannot possibly function properly. So we are asking, what is security, in security and insecurity? Are you getting tired? We're going to find out first what is insecurity. (coughs) Why we live perpetually in insecurity. Now, in in that very inquiry, why we live in in this state, confusion, all the rest of it, the very awareness of it is the beginning of intelligence. Right? Are you following this? Now let's begin again. I am insecure. I have searched for security, which is run away from my insecurity, which is I have created the opposite, and I am in conflict with it. No insecure and wanting security. So there is a struggle going on. So I see how stupid that is. Which the very recognition of this is the beginning of intelligence, right? Are, you, are we together in this? Not completely. Also? Not completely. Not completely. So, look, we have divided the world into nationalities, and these nationalities is one of the major causes of war. Right? One of the causes, the economic and so on and so on. But one of the causes is this feeling that we are separate from this person, you follow? Nationalities. Now, to recognize that and to be free of it is to be intelligent. No? Or would you want to be unintelligent? (laughs) No, this is important, please. To recognize, to see that which is false and to abandon that is intelligence. Right? Now, <laughs> I see after investigating, which we have done, there is no security in belief, 
right? Because belief changes all the time. It can be argued down. It can be broken down. Faith, belief, ideals bring doubt to it, it begins to disappear. So there is no security in that. Therefore my brain has seen that which is illusory, which he has considered before as giving me security, is abandoned it. So it is it's a become alive, intelligent. And it says, is there security at all? There is when there is intelligence. I don't know if you follow this. Intelligence is the most positive force of security. Right? I mean, make, is this clear? To abandon psychologically everything that is false, to perceive it, to see it very clearly, is intelligence. Where there is intelligence you don't even ask whether you are secure or insecure. So. Can we then, together, see the nature of security and insecurity, and in that very examination, observation, probing, discover for ourselves, not because this anybody says, discover for ourselves that there is supreme security where there is intelligence. The second extract is from Krishnamurti's second talk in Bombay, 1985, titled, Why Are We All So Insecure? Most human beings, all of us, seek security. And it takes many, many forms. Security is very important. If you are not secure, both physically and psychologically, your brain cannot function adequately, fully, energetically. We must have security. But physical security is denied to millions and millions of people. Well, hardly one meal a day. And we so called educated, well to do people who have taken various forms of beliefs and so on, they are all the time seeking either consciously or not knowing a kind of security which will give us complete satisfaction. But we never inquire what is insecurity. We want security and it is necessary, both biologically and psychologically. It must be security. And in the search of security, we never inquire into what is insecurity. You understand? If we can find out together what is insecurity, why we are insecure, then in the unfolding of it, in the causation of it, Securities naturally comes about. 
of the together, in our conversation. We never inquire why we are insecure. We are always wanting security. The more, the better. So what, what is insecure? Why are we insecure in our relationship to each other? In the external world, there's tremendous disturbance, turmoil and agony is going on in the world. And each one wants his own place, each one wants his own security. He wants to escape from this terrible state of insecurity. So can we together inquire what is, why we are insecure? Right? Can we do that? Can we do it? Can we go along that line? Not what is security. Because your security may be in illusion, in some fantastic romantic concept. Your security may be in some image, in tradition, or security in a family, in a name. And there is always uncertainty in in trying to find security, right? Can we go along? So why why are human beings, you and people like us, we are laymen, not specialists? Why are we insecure? What does that word mean? In our relationship to your wife or husband, there is a sense of not complete security, not complete sense of what everything is all right. There is always this background of sense of a feeling that it, everything isn't quite right. Everything is so confused, uncertain. So. If we could inquire why the human brain, which is all the time seeking security, and it must have security, otherwise it can't function properly, right? And we notice that you agree too easily. You nod your head as though it was something. Please keep your head still. And inquire with me to find out why, why human beings are insecure. Insecure about what? About not having a job in a country that's overpopulated, like this country. Fifteen million people are born every year. Overpopulated and education is rotten in this country. There were one job that probably 10,000 people. And capacity, technological capacity, and so on, in all that. There is a certain state of inquiry, not only research, but one feels in achieving that there is certain security. Right? And in their relationship, there is always this sense of insecurity. Right? Don't, you, don't you know all this, or am I inventing all this? So why? What is insecurity? 
If we are not in, in, insecure, we won't talk about gods. We won't talk about security. Because we are insecure, we seek the opposite. Have you ever listened to sound that crow? Sound. The universe is filled with sound. The earth is full of sound. And we seek silence. Meditation is to find some kind of peace or some kind of silence. But if you understand sound in that hearing the sound, there is silence. Silence is not separate from sound. Well, you won't understand. Because you will never listen to sound. Have you ever sat under a tree when the air is very still, quiet, not a leaf dancing, when it's absolutely quiet? Have you ever sat under a tree in the, like that and listened to the sound of the tree? If there was no silence, there would be no sound. So, the sound of insecurity, the sound makes us seek security, because we will never listen to the sound of insecurity. If you listen to the implications of insecurity, which makes us invent gods, rituals and all that stupid nonsense, if you listen to the whole movement of, inqu- of insecurity, then out of that insecurity you, there comes naturally security. But if you pursue security as something separate from in- insecurity, then you are in a conflict. Right? I wonder if you understand me. Please do understand this little bit. You know, a funny evening when the stars are clear, not in Bombay, when the stars are clear, and there is only one star in the sky, and there is absolute silence. But you listen, if you listen to that silence, there is, in that silence there is the sound. And there is no separation between sound and silence, they both go together. In the same way, if you understand insecurity, the causation of it. The cause of insecurity is our own limited, broken psychological state. And when there is a a way of living that is holistic, then there is no such thing as security or insecurity.
The third extract is from the second talk in Sanan, 1982, titled Total Insecurity. I am asking, we are asking, cooperating together to find out a way of life where there is no cause He said, this is a tremendous question, don't just throw it out. I have lived so far, all of us have lived so far, (coughs) responding to the causes. Treating the symptoms and never going to the root, which is the cause. We have accepted causation. That's our tradition. That's our condition. And there are those extraordinarily clever, erudite people who say, you can never change the condition. When you modify it, you can alter it, but the condition, the condition of man will always remain, which means he will always suffer, <coughs> he will always be in a state of anxiety, fear, and so on. But we are trying to observe and ask, this condition in which we live has been brought about by various causes. The main cause (coughs) is the desire to be secure. Secure outwardly and secure very, very deeply inwardly, to have no doubt, no uncertainty, to completely secure. That's what how, how our mind works. Because inwardly there is uncertainty, please follow this, insecurity, because I can't depend on anybody. I've discovered that. Even in my most intimate relations, I can't dis- depend. And my desire from childhood is my condition which says, be secure for God's sake. Either in ideas, in knowledge, in property, or no property, which is another form of security, go off into the mountains or into the monastery, that's another form of security, be attached to Jesus or Krishna or somebody. So, we are inwardly insecure, the cause of it we are going to, the cause of insecurity and the demand to be secure. You understand? That's we all want security, popularity, no. Now, why is it that we are insecure? Begin inwardly first, please, you understand? The outward things are controlled, shaped by inward action. How? Our psychological demands control the outward circumstances. We have created this society, the society in which we live. We are responsible for it, not the present generation, thousand generations of human beings have produced this. Of those generations I am a part of it. 
So we have produced this. And we say we must be secure. Why? Because inwardly we are sick, uncertain, confused. Right? If I am very clear, why should I be sick, demand security? So we are going to find out <coughs> the cause of this urge, this longing for security. What is the cause of it? I, I feel secure in putting on a certain robe. I belong to a certain group. I feel safe. I feel safe when I say I am British or Swiss. Inwardly, too, when I say I am a great man or I am a very, I have got a job which satisfies, and so on, so on. So, So, what is the cause of this uncertainty? This is deep sense of insecurity. This is, you all want security, right? So what is the cause of it? One sir. What is the cause of my insecurity? My feeling of loneliness, of my feeling totally dissatisfied with everything, discontent like a flame that is burning in me about the things a man has done which I don't want to do, but I don't know how to not to do. You understand? I am burning. I am anxious, depressed. I want to change the world, but I don't know how. I want to stop wars, and the politicians won't listen. The speaker has tried it. So, why is the brain, which can only function in complete security, fully? No, it can only function that way, yet it is constantly living in uncertainty, in security. What is the cause of it? Don't look at me, please, look at yourselves and find out. What do we mean by security? Secure from what? Secure from danger. Right? Secure from any form of interference. Right? Secure to pursue my own way. To be safe in my desire for fulfilment. Inwardly. Outwardly I, I need to be secure, otherwise I, you and I wouldn't be here. You must have food, clothes and shelter. No, natural. But that which is natural is being denied. 
by the division of nationalities. Any intelligent man sees this, that there can be only security for mankind if there is a global relationship and interrelationship economically, socially, a global relationship, not an isolated security. So we are seeking Please follow this. We are seeking security for ourselves. Which is, ourselves is the rest of mankind. Right? Because my consciousness is like yours. You suffer, I suffer. We go through terrible times, so do I. All human beings psychologically are on the same ground. It's this terrible illusion that we are all separate entities. So is there security in isolation? I'm not doing careful. Why? Who has brought about this isolation? Having brought about this isolation, it protects itself, and that protection is called security. And we see more and more observable this tribal seclusion. Isolation is destroying the world, right? America against Russia, Russia against Afghanistan, you know, all the horrors that are going on. You have your guru and I have my guru. I haven't got one, but you have your guru. Your priest, your authority. So, if one realizes, sees the truth, please just listen to this for a few, give your attention to this. If you really see in your investigation that in isolation there is no security, now, thought has brought about this isolation, of course. Now, how do you see the truth of the fact that isolation is most destructive? Who sees it? Does thought see it? You understand my question? You have heard the statement that any form of isolation, any form, is destructive, will inevitably bring about ins- total insecurity. You hear that statement, which is first you hear through the sensory ear, then you hear those words which have significance inwardly, right? And you say, yes, I hear it, I, I see that. Now what do you mean by seeing that? Say, seeing the statement, by saying, I understand it, I understand what it means. Right? Do you understand the idea the words or the actual fact. Not and see the fact, which is it. Please look at it. The word, which has spoken in English, we speak in English, therefore the understanding of the word, the conclusion of the sen- of the whole. 
statement? Are you observing the abstraction of, of that fact as an idea or without abstraction observing the fact? <coughs> I observe the fact that I have pain, physical pain. There is no abstraction about it. I don't say I am perfectly well when there is agony. When there is real pain, there is no abstraction. But our brain is traditionally conditioned to make abstractions. That is, I hear this statement, I make an abstract of it, that is, the idea of it, the concept of it, the conclusion by Joe, this is so. And I hold on to that conclusion, which is totally different from the fact. Now, what is it that you are doing? What is it that, I'm, that we are together doing? Observing the fact only, without abstraction, without the idea. <coughs> when you so observe, that is, observing without the desire to transcend it, the desire, please follow the fact that as long as I have an image about myself, it's going to be hurt. I am that image. Right? I am that image. But my condition of my brain says I am different from the image. <coughs> so I see the fact that there is this division. Right? I say, why is there this division? There is this division because thought has separated the fact from me. The me is the fact. The me is the enemy. <laughs> right? The me with my the image gets hurt. So security, as long as I live in sec- in isolation, there must be uncertainty. From that uncertainty comes the desire to be secure. Cause is thought has made me insecure. Thought has not made me. Thought has brought about this sense of division. I am British, you are French, I am my guru, my guru is different than yours, my God is different, I will be saved only through that way, and so on, so on, so on. It's all the product of thought. And thought has brought about this isolation, and where there is isolation there is total insecurity. And being insecure, the urge to be secure. Now, to see this whole thing, to observe the whole thing, As you would observe a beautiful mountain without any reaction, just watch it. When you so observe, the very cause disappears, doesn't it? Because it is so. It is so, in fact, that thought has brought this isolation. Having brought it about, there is confusion, conflict, isolation. And therefore in that isolation there can be no security. FY6 If one remains with that fact completely, 
then the causation doesn't create an effect. Got it? We are, we are wanting to change the effect, but not wipe, not see the cause and let the cause disappear. From this one begins to inquire, what is intelligence? Because this is intelligence, you understand? To see the faults and discard the faults is intelligence, right? Is that clear? I see, and there is perception that nationalism is destructive. To perceive that is intelligence. I perceive this whole religious structure which man has built with all their rituals, dresses, man, thought has built it. And to see the fact that it's not religion is intelligence. To see the fact that thought has created isolation outwardly and also inwardly. And the cause of this is thought which is fragmented in itself. And to see that is obviously intelligence. Now, to see that, that way, going more and more deeply, you will see. That we live in a world that is so utterly impractical, utterly unintelligent. To see that, not just verbally say it's unintelligent. So to discover, not to be told what is false, what is illusory. To see, not to act upon it, just to see it. That very perception of the false denies the false. I don't have to fight against it. You understand? So I see, step by step, the way of intelligence is acting. It's not my intelligence, it's not yours, it's intelligence. The final extract in this episode is from Krishnamurti's second talk at Rajgat in 1962, titled why this insistence to be secure? Gentlemen asks, there must be security, otherwise we can't live. Our stomachs have to be filled, we have to have shelter and clothing. And at the same time, how can, you, how can there be freedom? Is that the question, sir? I wonder why we put this question as though the two are not possible together. Is it impossible to be physically secure and not let that physical security interfere with psych psychologically? And 
Is such security made possible at all by wanting psychological security? So let's take a very simple example, and I don't like to take example, but we will just now for once. There is starvation in the world, whole of Asia. You know it as well as I do, I don't have to go into it. And there are scientific means to completely feed mankind, clothe and give him shelter. Why isn't it done? It can be done. There is no question about it. And yet we are not doing it. Why? Physically it can be done. And yet we are not doing it. Why? Surely the reason is psychological, not physical. Because we have separated ourselves as Hindus, Muslims, Christians, with sovereign governments, with separate religions, separate dogmas, beliefs, countries, nationalisms, flags and all the rest of the nonsense. It is that that is preventing fundamentally the feeding of man and giving him shelter and clothing. The communists say we have a method. And so the method becomes all important and is willing to fight for the method. And for him the method is more important than solving the problem of starvation. Every organizer so identifies himself with the organization, because that's another form of self-aggrandizement, self-importance, which prevents <coughs> the solution of starvation. So. One can be physically secure and must be. But why should we be psychologically secure? You understand my question? Why this demand to be psychologically secure? Is there such thing as psychological security? We demand security in our relationship, husband, wife, with our children. <coughs> and when we do demand such security, what happens? Love goes by the window. And can you be secure in relationship? In any relationship. Can you? You can only be secure with something that is static, not something which is, which is living. And yet we demand, we insist that we must have security <coughs> with something that's live, <coughs> which doesn't mean that we must seek insecurity, because to seek insecurity will only lead to mental illness and the hospitals and wards are filled with mentally ill people who are so frightened of insecurity that they invent all forms of security. So why this insistent, insistence to be secure? Is there any, can you ever be secure in anything? So why not accept, why not see the fact that there is no such thing as psychological security 
as belonging to uh, India, to Russia or whatever it is. And thereby create a world in which we'll all have physical security. You understand the question, sirs? Because nobody is willing to give up intelligently, sanely, without being persuaded, driven, give up his commitments to his nation, to his particular pattern of action or particular pattern of belief. Why should we be Hindus? Why should we belong to India? You see, I know you will listen, but it doesn't mean a thing to you. You are settled down in your form of belief, in your security. You were born as Hindus and you will die jolly well as Hindus. You are really not concerned about starvation. So that gentleman's question is merely a theoretical. It isn't an actuality to him. If it were an actuality, a thing that you've got to face and resolve, then you would inquire into the whole structure of security. <laughs>